Today, we'll be performing a manual startup and takeoff of the Cessna 152 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can always use Control e to auto start the plane, but if you're looking for a bit more realism, you can use a checklist that a real pilot would use. And that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be omitting steps from the checklist that don't really make sense for a simulator, but I will still show them on screen. Let's start with the initial checklist. First, ensure that the fuel valve is set to on by making sure it's pointed in the indicated direction. Now turn on the master. Extend the flaps and then verify full range of motion. Next, we can check the pitot heat. There's no visual indicator, but the only way to verify that it actually is working is to switch over to the passenger seat and keep an eye on the amperage gauge as we toggle the switch. You should see a slight deflection in the needle as the switch is toggled. Now let's check the fuel gauges for accuracy. I started this flight with 50%, so this looks accurate. Finally, switch off the master. The exterior checklist doesn't have anything we can do in a simulator. The interior checklist doesn't have anything we can do in a simulator either. Now we can move on to the start checklist. Again, verify the fuel valve is set to on. Make sure the carburetor heat is off or cold and make sure that the mixture is at full rich, or 100%. Since the plane has not yet been started today, we can hit the primer twice. Verify the propeller is clear of people and objects. Turn on the master and the beacon. Now hold the brakes and turn the magneto switch to the start position. Make sure you hold as you're turning to start until the engine actually starts and then let off. After startup, make sure there is oil pressure. Now we can turn on the nav lights. And since we are near sea level and it's not too hot, we can leave the mixture knob as is. Now onto the pre-taxi checklist. First, bring the flaps back up. We can tune ATIS to get the current weather and altimeter settings. Kilo Romeo, Kilo Delta, automated weather observation 1700 Zulu. Wind 287 at tree. Visibility Niner. Sky condition clear. Temperature 15 C dew point. One tree, C altimeter, two niner, eight niner. Kilo room. And that's our altimeter setting, two niner, eight niner. We'll turn the knob on the altimeter to set that. If we had a squat code, we could enter it here on the transponder. However, since we'll be flying without ATC today, we'll just turn on VFR or 1200 and set to altitude.
You can turn on the taxi lights here if you'd like. I'll leave them off. Adjust the attitude indicator if it's not level. Match the heading indicator to the magnetic compass. Showing about 075 here. And very nearly there here. Release the parking brake so that we can test the brake pedal. We'll check the brakes here. And they do work. Now we're ready to taxi out to the run-up area. As we turn out of our parking spot, check the turn coordinator. The wing should dip in the direction of the turn, and the ball should swing in the opposite direction. Now for the run-up checklist. The run-up is our test of the engine and instruments prior to takeoff. First, set the brakes. Verify that the fuel valve is still on. And that our trim is set to takeoff. Check the flight controls. First, the ailerons. Next, the elevator. And then the rudder. Now we can check the flight instruments. Our airspeed indicator is on zero since we're not moving. Verify that the attitude indicator is level. We've already set the altimeter. The vertical speed indicator is on the zero. We've already matched the heading indicator to the magnetic compass. And we tested the turn coordinator as we turn out of our parking spot. If the density altitude was excessively high, we could adjust the mixture knob, but we'll leave it as is. Now with the brakes held, increase the engine RPM to 1700. Verify the oil temperature and pressure are in the green. Check the suction gauge. Verify a slight charge on the ammeter. Now we'll test the mags. First turn to the left position. Should see a very slight decrease in engine RPM. And turning back to both, we should get it back. Now hit the switch to the left twice to get the right magneto. Should notice a very slight RPM drop again. And we should get it back once we go to both. Now we can check the carb heat. Again, we should see a very slight engine RPM drop once more. Push that back in. All right, everything is normal. Let's reduce the engine to idle.
This completes the run-up. We're now ready to taxi to the runway. Now, just before takeoff, we'll complete the pre-takeoff checklist. For this takeoff, we'll have the flap set at zero degrees and the mixture set to full ridge. The carburetor heat and the pitot heat will both remain off. We already have the transponder set to VFR and reporting altitude. Doors and windows are closed. The landing light is optional, but we'll make sure we turn on the strobes. Release the brakes and we can line up for departure. All right, now we're ready for takeoff. We'll go full power. Check the oil pressure to make sure that it's still in the green. Air speed's alive. We're gonna rotate at 50 knots. There's 50, we'll come up here. For this takeoff, we will climb at the VY speed of 67 knots. If we had an obstacle to clear or a shorter runway, we would climb at the VX speed of 55 knots instead. And that's it. We have started with a completely powered off Cessna 152 all the way to takeoff. You can definitely omit quite a few steps to manually start this aircraft, but this will get you very close to realism. If you have any questions about the startup process, or you'd like to see a topic covered in a future video, leave a comment down below. Also, ask me any questions over on Twitch. I'm live most evenings. Thanks for watching.